looking at differential equations involving direct proportionality. Uh, first, before we get into the calculus side of it, we do have to remember how to set up a directly proportional situation. So if you ever see that one thing is directly proportional to another, such as if x is directly proportional to y, then that means that x is some constant multiple of y, where k is any constant, and you will sometimes see k referred to as the constant of proportionality. So using that to answer calculus questions, um, let's look at a very generic situation. So we'll say that p of t represents the population of gnomes on an island. Here is the key sentence, the population of gnomes grows at a rate directly proportional to the population size. There's your key sentence. You have to write a differential equation modeling this, then solve it through separation. So the population grows at a rate. So grows at a rate means we're talking about P prime. And the rate of growth is directly proportional. So is some constant multiple of the population size, which was defined as P of T. Um, so you could say P prime of T instead of just P prime. So P prime of T is equal to K P of T. That is your differential equation. Now, solving it through separation, rather than P prime of T, I would rather, rather write DP DT is equal to KP. And then to solve that through separation, we would divide by the P. So DP over P is equal to K DT. You could divide the K over with the the P if you want, but that's going to make things a little bit more difficult. Do the antiderivative of both sides real quick, and I'm going to solve this really fast and come right back to it. There we go. So when you solve and integrate, you end up getting P is equal to AE to the KT. And if you are thinking a lot about Algebra 2 and Pre-Cal, you may recognize this formula because it is the formula you use for exponential growth and decay. Some teachers call it PERT, where it's A equals PE to the RT. It's the exact same equation. They just use different constants to represent different things. But this is where your PERT formula comes from. It's a differential equation. And when you solve through set, uh, separation, you end up with this. So now, rather than just memorizing the formula, you see where it comes from, which there's a little bit of value to that, I suppose. Um, and this differential equation, dp dt equals kp, happens so frequently, I would say go ahead and memorize the solution because it can save you some time. Because if you can memorize and recognize that differential equation and know that the solution is going to be P equals AE to the KT, it can save you all of this time through separating, uh, of separating and solving. But, uh, the one thing to remember is only use the, use the memorized solution if it shows up in a multiple choice question. And now I'm talking to AP students. If it's a multiple choice question, then by all means, skip all the steps and just write down the solution. However, if it's a free response question on the AP exam, do remember that you get a point for separating, then you get points or two for integrating, then you get a point for plus C, then you get points for solving for the C, and there's a whole bunch of points involved in showing the minute little details of separating and solving. So only use the memorized version for multiple choice questions. Do not use it for free response questions. So let's look at a few examples of AP questions from years gone by where this setup has come into play. So you notice on this problem uh, from 1985, they give you a differential equation, dy dt is equal to negative 2y. And when you see that, you should notice that we have the dy dt is directly proportional to the dependent variable and what you're looking for is whatever the numerator d whatever is for your dy dt or dy dx or dp dt make sure you are directly proportional to that thing and if you recognize that you are directly proportional to the dependent variable then you can jump straight to the solution y is going to equal a e to the kt and it saves you some time for solving now on this particular problem they gave us an initial condition y is equal to 1 when t is equal to 0, so this should satisfy the initial condition 0, 1, and that will allow us to solve for a, and then it says find the value of t 
for which y is equal to one half. So we have a couple of situations there that we can use to solve this. I'm going to pause the video and solve it really quick, and we'll look at the solution. Okay, and I just realized I made a little mistake. I, um, we know the value of k in this case. It's dy dt is negative 2y. So instead of y equals ae to the kt, we know that k is negative 2. So it's ae to the negative 2t. Um, and then here I plug in 0, 1, and I solve for my y. Or I'm sorry, solve for a. a ends up being 1. And so my equation is y equals e to the negative 2t. And then find the value of t for which y is 1 half. So now I'll take this. And I'll plug in one half for the y, and we'll use some algebra to solve for t. And we'll use natural logs and finish solving it. And in this case, they ended up using some properties of natural logs. So I solved by taking the natural log of both sides divided by negative 2. And that was not one of the options, ln of 1 half over negative 2. So I rewrote ln of 1 half as ln of 2 to the negative 1 which then allowed me to bring that negative one down and those negatives canceled, giving you natural log of two over two. So on the AP exam, if you're an AP student and you're doing multiple choice, do you prepare to use some of those properties of logs from algebra two and pre-cal? So let's look at this one from 1988. Bacteria in a certain culture increase at a rate directly proportional to the number present. There is your generic exponential growth setup. Now, they did not define any variables here, so usually what I will do in this case is I'll say something like, all right, let's let B equal the number of bacteria. Whoops, there's the I. Uh, and it says it's increasing at a rate proportional. So the rate, the derivative, is proportional to the actual population. So DB dt is equal to some constant multiple of the population itself. And there we have our traditional exponential growth differential equation set up, and I automatically know that the solution is going to be some constant, I'm sorry, a times e to a constant times t, and then you look at the given information and try to solve. In this case, it's a doubling question, so it tells you the bacteria doubles in three hours. Um, well, if you remember way, way, way back in your uh, pre-cal and algebra 2 classes, you may, have remember, you may have learned that a is your initial amount. So if they give you an initial amount, you can just slap it in there for the value of A. Uh, in this case, they didn't give us an initial amount, but they did tell us that bacteria doubles in three hours. So when T is equal to three, I will end up with three times my initial amount. So I'm going to use that to say that when T is equal to three, I will end up with exactly three times my initial amount. So 3A is equal to AE to the 3K. Some people like to just plug in random numbers. They say, okay, let's just say we started with 10 and we set it equal to 30 because it will triple the initial amount. I'm keeping it generic in terms of A. And then we need to uh, solve for K with this. And you end up getting the natural log of 3 divided by 3 for your value of K. Um, and then finally, the final question in how many hours, so what does T need to be so that the, the bacteria actually triples? And so I would say that I'm finishing with three times my initial amount. So we'll set up the equation 3A is equal to A times E to the natural log of 3 over 3 times T. And you would solve that equation and circle the right answer. Um, now, for this video, I am focusing more on getting the initial setup uh, with direct proportionality and getting the differential equation solved. So I'm actually, just for the sake of time, going to quit solving these all the way through the end, and we'll talk about just the setup and what you would do in solving it. So let's move on. So this one's a free response question. At time zero, a jogger is running with a velocity of 300 meters per minute, so my little brain's ticking. So I see at time zero, my velocity is 300. The jogger is slowing down with a negative acceleration that is directly proportional to t. So my acceleration, acceleration is directly proportional, some constant multiple of t. This brings the jogger to a stop in 10 minutes. So a stop in 10 minutes means that your velocity at time 10 is zero because we're stopped at time 10. That's a very slow, uh, gradual slowdown, but whatever. Um, 
Now, because all the information was given to you in terms of velocity, I don't want to use a of t. Instead, I'm going to think of that as v prime of t is kt. And then, um, for the sake of being more consistent with differential equations, I'm probably going to call that dv dt is equal to kt. And then be careful because this one is not your exponential growth decay type setup. Notice in this case, we're directly proportional to the independent variable, not the dependent variable. So don't try to jump straight into your memorized solution where V equals AE to the KT or something like that, um, because this one will not set up that way or will not solve that way. But this is the initial setup. So they gave you a, uh, an equation where you are directly proportional to something. They're expecting you to use that to set up an equation. And then you would go on and use all the given information to solve for your velocity function. And there are other questions later on in this problem that you would have to solve for specific things. Then from 1993, and I believe they used scientific calculators in 1993. So here's this problem where we have P represents the population of wolves. The population is increasing at a rate directly proportional to 800 minus P. So increasing at a rate, so P prime of T is directly proportional, some constant multiple of 800 minus P. Okay, so there I've translated that sentence into a math equation. They do tell you to use a constant of proportionality k. That's usually a standard go-to, but in case you happen to have used r or p, you wouldn't use p here. Uh, but anything else, make sure you are consistent with what they tell you to use. Uh, and for the sake of being consistent with differential equations, I don't like p prime of t. I'll set this up. dp dt is k times 800 minus and p of t can just be represented by p um, and then you would solve through separation and this one is not your traditional uh, exponential growth setup it's a little bit different we have 800 minus p instead of just kp so this one you would really need to go through and solve through separation i wouldn't try to memorize the solution for this situation as well so this video i just wanted to talk about how to set up things being directly proportional and once you get your differential setup a differential equation set up, then it goes back to separable differential equations using your initial conditions to solve for whatever constants you have to, and answering the questions.